All right, so we're here to look at running a Hyper-V cluster in VMware Workstation 8. And the first thing I want to talk about are settings here. And when you go to the processor, you'll notice that you have to have Virtualize Intel VT uh, enabled, or in the case of my processor, which is an i7. All right, so uh, on the VMware support forum, you'll notice to support Hyper-V, you have to add a couple strings to the VMX file. Um, I will give you the link to this later. And uh, if you do a Google search for Hyper-V version 2 dynamic storage, um, you will see a handful of videos on this topic uh, that were very useful in helping me set up my uh, Hyper-V cluster. All right, so I'm using one bridge network adapter. It's easier to kind of deploy the lab out with that. So I want to investigate something here. I'm not sure if firewall settings got reset after my live migration, but I was not able to ping this server um, once it live migrated. So let's test this. Move this server back to VM01. See how our server looks in this process. Connect to it and we'll pull our ping up. Just watch what happens. So it seems to be functioning. Albeit a little slow. Our live migration is still going on. So, did we lose our connection? I don't think we have yet. We're at 67%, the server is still going. So the server stops for our ping cycle, it looks like. We disconnect. Status migrating. We've still got our ping, so we lost a couple ping packets that time. It reconnected us back to... or reconnected us back to the Hyper-V host and it appears to be replying to ping, so that looks pretty promising. All right, and the other question I was asked is, can we take and deploy a VM to the cluster? So we are going to do that now. And notice our shared cluster volume. And we're going to skip the installation of the operating system because 
the various drives may not exist on the different clusters as far as CD-ROMs and things of that nature. All right, so let's go to Hyper-V02. fire this up. Now basically I have one, because I'm uh, nesting hypervisors, I have one uh, bridged NIC and then I am sharing that with Hyper-V and sharing the OS access. I tried other combinations that didn't work and I don't know if that was because it was too complicated or if because of the fact that I'm uh, nesting hypervisors and would have switches without routers and things of that nature like multiple switches with VLAN and things like that but for the purposes of this lab it's worked out pretty good so now as you can see here Deploying the OS. And this is the server on the shared cluster volume, which is pretty much the way that I made these other servers. I just wanted to demonstrate that. Now the way that I created the storage was I created the um, storage pool, I created the disks, I extended the volume, then I created uh, virtual disks within and I gave them an iSCSI initiator, mapped the iSCSI to the Hyper-V01, um, formatted the storage, brought it online but I did not map a drive letter. Uh, one of which, except for the quorum drive, which I did map that uh, one gig drive and gave it to letter Q and with a description of quorum. And then whenever I installed the uh, cluster, it automatically found the storage. And the next step, which I was missing before, basically you, you uh, create cluster share volume for both of them. And then the uh, clusters will see this volume map to the C drive. Uh, so that was the piece that I was missing originally with um, regards to sharing the storage. And I just take the same scheme with the each of the Hyper-V hosts and point it to the, my different uh, volumes that I created. So this isn't really a tutorial per se, but just kind of an overview. And I believe if you use some of the links uh, that I've posted, you can piece everything together. If I rebuild my environment, I'll go ahead and make a, a full-blown tutorial, but these little tips should get you started. Um, so I hope you enjoy.